We don't have a blood test for health. So if I ask you today, are you healthy, how do you respond? And that's one of the fundamental problems is I don't know how to define health when I look at it. And so we can talk about all the corporate wellness programs in the world, but corporate wellness programs will optimize on lowering you know, uh, health insurance costs. Corporate wellness programs will have delaying illness till retirement. But I want to figure out a way to optimize health. And we'll talk about ways I think we could start to do that going forward. So Mark Twain, in his eminent wisdom, said the only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want, drink what you don't like, and do what you'd rather not. When I asked Steve, why didn't you like the title, What is Health? He said, if you put the word health in the title, people think of chewing cardboard. And that's part of the problem, is that health is something that we know we're not going to like if you say what you have to do. Things that are unhealthy are more appealing. And what I'll try to show you today is that that's not really the case. Um, by definition, things in health don't have to be unappealing. And so, you know, again, we go to what is that metric for health? Well, in the United States, we spent over a billion dollars last year in people over the age of 50 getting growth hormone. Why? If I give you growth hormone at age 50, 60, or 70, you're going to look better in a couple of months. You're going to be all buff. Your friends are going to come up and say, hey, what happened to you? Did you get a haircut? You look great. You're going to feel better. You're going to live on average 12, 13 years less. But you're going to look better. And yet our country, we do this all the time, right? People go in, especially in my city, Los Angeles, and they get shots of growth hormone to look better. They take, you know, whether it be steroids, they get Botox, they get all kinds of things to look better. But again, I want people to think about tomorrow as well as today. There's an amazing group of uh, people in Ecuador that was identified in a paper in Science this last year where they actually look, they have a mutation in the growth hormone receptor. And these people don't get cancer and don't get diabetes at all in their populations. They have other problems, but what we also know is that species that grow larger or members of a species that grow larger have more health problems. And yet, we as a society push to making people larger. You know, one of the chapters in the book is about football players. Football players are, in general, very large, have a lot of inflammation, as we'll talk about. And CNN did a story on this, you know, for the Super Bowl. And I can't tell you how many hate emails I got and letters. You're, you know, taking away American culture. You're screwing up. I'm not against football, but I'm against the concept of inflammation. I'm against the concept of the bigger, the better, and as we'll talk about. And so we need to start to identify what are the metrics each of us individually are going to look at, because obviously we want to live until our 90s. 